All right, FAQ number 22. I have a question here. How much time before the rapture? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> um, What's well, going to happen July the 7th of 2015? See, that's my birthday, so that's Lord's going to do that for me. <laughs> uh, no, honestly, I don't know. Um, there's a lot of different theories there, and I'll tell you what the Bible says here. Matthew chapter 24, verse 32 through 34. Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Now, the standard interpretation of that is the fig tree there in verse 32, the parable of the fig tree, the fig tree is Israel. You can read about that back in the Old Testament. Israel is compared to a fig tree. Okay, And when Jesus curses the fig tree that he's looking at a few chapters earlier here in, in the book of Matthew, he's cursing that generation, saying, you're rejecting me as your king, so this generation here is not going to get to experience the times that are coming here. Okay, this, this time of Jacob's trouble and then the millennial kingdom that follows it, which is what you read about here in Matthew chapter 24. You're reading about the time of Jacob's trouble. That's why he's addressing Jews. That's why it's, you know, uh, over here in um, verse 16, that, that let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. He's talking to Jews. And what's happening there is Jesus is saying, hey, this generation where I'm at is has rejected me. But in the future, you know, when Israel becomes a nation again, that generation is not going to pass till all things be fulfilled. All right? It's right there. And of course, you can read about that in the book of Revelation. Romans chapter 11 talks about the nation of Israel, you know, coming back into focus again in God's prophetic time clock there, so to speak. But here's the problem. Okay? Number one, you say, well, the generation of, you know, 1948, they, you know, that generation will not pass. What does that generation mean? Those that are born in 1948 or those that were alive in 1948? You know, well, there's still people that, are, that were alive in 1948. They weren't necessarily born in 1948. There's still people that, are, that were living in 1948 that are still alive today. So it still works for that. But if it's people that were born in 1948, you know, how much time are we looking at? What's a, what's a generation? Well, there's different numbers there. And, it, and, you know, you start to try and figure this stuff out. And it's like, you know, it, it, you, know you can get kind of, it's kind of difficult to set an actual date. Okay. And, you know, I do believe that, that God has things set and, and ready to go. I'll show you the verse on that. Um. See if I can find it here. Try to think of where this verse is at. Okay, found the verse. Couldn't think of where it was. Just had to look it up. Uh, Revelation chapter 9, verse 15. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. So even though I think our calendar has been messed with over the last 2,000 years with by the Catholics, basically, uh, God still knows the day, the, the month, the year, the hour even, when this event's going to happen. So he has it already set up. Uh, how close are we to the catching way of the, the body of Christ and the, the, the start of the time of Jacob's trouble? Well, I really don't know. Uh, it can go a lot of different ways right now. Um, I think we are getting very close. Uh, there's a lot of things prophetically happening that are just amazing. Um, the Antichrist uh, system is definitely ready to go. I mean, the Mark of the Beast technology is there. The Pope, Pope Francis, is doing more and more things that the Antichrist is going to do. Um, you know, and the Antichrist himself, he cannot show up until the body of Christ leaves. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 talks about that. You know, we are letting, you know, hindering the Antichrist from showing up. So when the body of Christ leaves, he's going to show up. But, I mean, it's like everything's ready for the Antichrist to take over right now. And uh, so it's close. Uh, how much time? I don't know. It could go a few more years uh, if you want to do this generation thing. Um, 
I would say, you know, if it if it goes past uh, about 20, 25, 20, you know, 30, 2030 or something like that, uh, you know, that'd be a problem. Um, it's, it, you know, it'd be getting kind of far away from that generation, the generation that would not pass till all things be fulfilled. Uh, so I would say it's going to be sometime within the next couple of years. Uh, how many years? I don't know. Could we still be here in another uh, five to ten years? Maybe, but <laughs> I don't see it happening. I think it's going to happen before then. So I can't set a date, but I do think it will be soon. And, you know, as Christians, we're supposed to live with the expectation of seeing him at any time. And uh, it's a purifying hope. Uh, and I've said that before, and just as a to repeat that challenge to you, uh, think about the fact that Jesus Christ could come today when you go to look at that website on the Internet that you know you shouldn't be looking at. When you go to do some other kind of a thing, or uh, maybe I'll just watch that movie that I know I shouldn't watch, or I'll tell this joke that I shouldn't be telling. Or It's a purifying hope. Live with the expectation Jesus could come today. And when you go out in public and you're going to witness and you start to kind of get that feeling of like, well, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't put that track down or maybe I shouldn't, whatever. Um, Jesus could come back today. Be ready for him to come. 